Hi everyone, so today I want to show you how to make this small diamond shaped gift bag. Now this was actually um, requested by somebody. Um, they'd seen this larger bag that I'd done um, probably last year, I think it was, uh, a while ago anyway. Um, and it's just a really nice gift bag. You open it up and you've got this really massive area in the middle to put loads of you know gifts or whatever so it's great for larger gifts but they said can i do a smaller version please so that's what i've set about doing so i actually recorded this video and i made this bag in it however when i came to edit it i realized that certain pieces were missing of the video so for some reason my camera decided i'm not going to record anymore so i'm making it again today so hopefully today will be slightly more successful so this one here, let me just show you the original one again. So this original one, this one measured, um, its final measurements were six inches wide, and then its depth is seven and a half, and the height, excluding the handles, is eight inches. And so it's quite a big bag, like it's a good, it's a, you know, if you've got a big gift, that's great. But if you've got a smaller gift, you want something a little bit smaller. So this is what I've downsized it to. Um, I kind of didn't want to, I didn't really know how small to go, but I thought this was quite a reasonable size. So this one finishes up as four inches wide, four and a quarter deep, and then four and three quarters high, excluding the handle. So I thought that was quite a decent um, kind of size for it, really. Um, the other things where I've done differently with this, I haven't put a magnetic thing in the flap you could do if you want to i've done a ribbon um and you can undo the bow if you want to or if you want to you can just slide it off like this and then open up the flap and then inside i've done this instead now on this one i haven't actually put the acetate in but there would be acetate in this window um and i've left this bit loose so if you're using sweets or something you can just you know tip them out of there or if you wanted to, my original idea was just say, for example, if you want to use this for toiletries, you can put your toiletries in and then just slide the acetate down instead of sticking it behind. Today, I'm going to stick it actually onto the panel, but you don't have to. You can leave it loose. Um, so that's this. This is the one that I've made that's slightly smaller. And then you can just literally put this back over like this. Obviously, if you want to take it off completely, you can. But because I like my bow, just slide it back on. Anyway, I can't really do it on camera. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do today. So today, um, these papers were actually art studio papers that I got from uh, the range. Um, the Miri card that I used on here was Dovecraft Rose Gold Miri card that I also got from the range. And then the ribbon was just for my stash. So today I'm using papers from um, Trimcraft's Bloom and Wonder first edition pad. This is the 8x8 that I've used, um, but obviously they come in a 12x12, 8x8 and 6x6. Each of the sheets are 200 GSM, so it's a good weight to use. So that's what I'm going to use. So let's get into it. Okay, so for the base card, you're going to need two pieces that are 5 inches by 6.5. You're going to need two pieces that are 2.5 um, by 4. And you're going to need um, two pieces that are one and a half by four. OK, so that's what you're going to need as far as base card. You are also going to need a bit for the inside piece, you know, the bit that, that's inside that the aperture is cut out of. And that will need to be a substantial card. So I'm actually going to use the pattern paper because it's 200 GSM. So it's, it's sturdy enough, but I wouldn't go any less than 200 GSM. You really want to go a little bit higher. Um, but I wanted a pattern on it. I didn't want it to be plain white. So it's up to you. If you wanted to, you could maybe use, you know, if you're using plain white as your base, you could use the plain white for the, the inside pieces with the aperture. Um, and then what you could do is just maybe, I don't know, ink it up, stamp it, um, do something with it so that it's a bit more patterned, emboss it. I don't know. You know, there's all sorts of things you can do. So we'll start with the, um, the two five by six and a half pieces. OK, so these two um, five by six and a half pieces, what you want to do is put them in and along the short edge, you're going to score at half an inch and at four and a half inches. And then you're going to turn it round and you're going to score at four inches. 
Okay, so that's that one done. So we can do the same on this one. Screw it half. Screw it half. Turn it round and screw it at four. Okay, so those two bits are done. You can put those to one side. Next, you want to bring in your two pieces that are two and a half by four. These aren't going to be scored. These are going to be cut. So I'm going to put those to one side for now and we'll come back to those in a minute. So then you've got your two pieces that are one and a half by four. One of them you want to score on the short edge at three quarters. And that's halfway. So this is going to be your connecting tab that's going to connect your two sides together. The other piece you want to score at half an inch because this is going to be your flap, your front flap. So I'm just going to, in fact, we're not going to put this away yet because we're going to score the inside piece as well. So on this front flap, obviously that's your tab, the bit that's below, I'm just going to round the corners because I quite like the look of having a, a rounded oh, corner on the front flap. Okay, so there's um, your front flap. You don't have to round the corners, but I just like the look it gives you. So that's the front flap done. So then we're just going to bring in the other some other pieces. Now this is what I was talking about with the... Um, the inside pieces that I showed you on the other one with the apertures cut out. So you need two pieces that are five by five. Now I've gone for the pattern um, because, yeah, I, I, I say I wanted it to be patterned and I just want to cut an aperture out. I don't want to have to faff around with different layers, cutting an aperture, cutting an aperture out of a mat, out of a pattern, out of a base. I just want to cut it and be done. So on this five by five, you're literally going to score at half an inch on three sides. Now, I would advise that you go for an any way up pattern just because it just makes it easier, especially if you're making it the first time. Once you've made it, you might then be able to navigate with the directional paper. But until you can, until you've done it once, I would just use a, a non-directional paper just, just, just for easiness, really. Um, basically, what it is, is on the three sides that you've scored, this top bit that you haven't scored on, that is the top. These are your sides, that's the bottom. Okay, so if you are using a directional paper, that's what you want to do. Right, so then we can go ahead and we can put the scoreboard away. Okay, so the bits I'm going to deal with right now are the two main base pieces, the flap and the connecting part. So what you want to do is on your main pieces, let me just put my connector and my uh, flap at the top there. What I would do is I would put some red tape on these flaps first. In a minute, we're going to cut to make them into tabs we're going to cut the notch bits out but i found it easier if you add the tape first and then you haven't got as much faffing um with trying to get tape you know round corners and things so i'm going to go ahead now and just add this red tape on all of my tabs okay so i've done um done that so then what you want to do is you're going to notch them out. So you need to, now normally we'd do that kind of a notch, wouldn't we? we kind of just take the little corner off. But on this, you really want to go in quite hard so that you get quite a good angle. And if you want to, actually, you can go ahead and, if it helps, fold your score lines first and then do the notching. I am going to do that this time around because I didn't do it on the other one. Um, and I just found that you, I ended up with weird bits on the edges where the where the notches are so i'm just going to go through and just fold and burnish all of my score lines first okay so i've done all my score lines so now i'm going to go back and carry on with notching out these tabs if you find that you haven't notched it quite enough when you come to put it together that's fine you can just add in you know extra bits so I'm just going to notch this one out as well. This might need to be more severe, but I'm not sure. So I'm just notching it normally. And then the bit in the middle here, I tend to fold it in half and then just cut down the two layers together because that way it's just easier. You're just, you're just saving yourself a bit of time. So you should end up with that. Okay, so now you can see why we added tape first because obviously trying to cut that angle on a piece of tape is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to do repeat this process again on the other piece, and I'll come back to you in a minute. OK, 
Okay, so you should end up with two pieces that look like that. As I said, if you end up finding that these aren't quite, you know, acute enough angles, then you can always trim a bit more off in a bit. Right, so next we want to bring in, first one side for a second, bring in our flap and our connecting tab. On the connecting tab, again, if you want to fold it first, you can. I'm going to fold it, and the same with this one. And then we're just going to add some red tape. So both of these, we're going to add red tape to, we've done mountain folds, and we're adding red tape to those two sides and to that tab there. So you end up with that. Now, as you can see, I've got a bit of a gap here. If you want to, you can put tape on it. It doesn't matter too much because it's going to be covered over. If you want to, you can trim it down. So it's just the, the width of your tape either side. That's fine as well. Um, right, so we're going to bring these two bits in. So on one of them, I'm just going to turn this around like this because this is the top, that's the bottom. So this bit here is going to stick underneath there. Now, if you want to, you can actually notch that tab out. And I am going to do that, I think, because it does make it a little bit easier getting it in. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a notch out that tab there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick that in to there like that. So that's going to be the flap on the front of my bag. Okay, so you end up with your front flap like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could stick it on the outside, but I just prefer it not. I prefer it to be on the inside because we're going to cover this bit up in a minute with pattern paper anyway, so it's fine. Um, so next, we want to take the connecting flap and we're just going to put this on the edge here. So if you fold it in half so you can see and make sure it's not you know, going over or being too far back, we're going to stick that onto there. Now, again, with this, you can notch it out. And again, I think I probably would notch it just a little bit, doesn't need to be lots, um, just because it just makes it easier to kind of fit it in. Uh, so we're going to notch that out like that. And then I'm just going to take the backing off of one side. Turn it round and then stick that down, line it up with that edge. Make sure it's nice and straight with that edge. Like that. Okay, so that's one side done. And then we're going to take the other one and it's the short side. So you want to put, you got a square, rectangle, rectangle, square. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this onto there, making sure those two edges kind of butt up against each other. Okay, so you should end up with that when it's folded flat. And so what will happen is this will, in a minute, when we put the sides on, this will come up and it will be like something along those lines. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and add the pattern papers on and then we'll put the sides on. So what we need for the, the patterns. So on your, your box, you've got obviously this piece here and the same on the back. This piece and this piece are the same. So for those, you will need... So you need two mat pieces that are three and three quarter by three and three quarter and two pattern pieces that are three and a half by three and a half. And then for the bottom section of those two sides, you need two mat pieces that are two and a quarter by three and three quarters and two pattern pieces that are two inches by three and a half. OK, so I'm going to go ahead now, stick them onto their mats and then stick them onto the box in the right place. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and stick them onto my box. Now, if you want to, if you like the ribbon idea, but you don't want it to be loose, what you can do is you can actually stick your ribbon down first onto your box and then put your panels over the top. If you want to do that, you would need to put the ribbon underneath the back panel, the base and this base, and then have it popping up and just having it over this front section here. In fact, I'm going to do that on mine now. I don't know how it's going to look. I kind of think it will look better to have the run all the way round. Um, if you wanted to, you could stick it down on the outside. That's another option. Um, I'm going to put mine underneath and just have it coming over at the front here. Um, and we'll see how that looks. I don't know how it's going to look. So I'm just going to put these two these panels to one side for now. And we'll bring the ribbon in. 
so the ribbon that you're going to need i've chosen a um a black piece so what i would suggest you do is the ribbon that i've got here i think i ended up going for let's have a look 12 inches uh 24 25 about 26 inches is what i went up going for so i always reckon you need about 12 inches to tie a bow roughly it depends on the ribbon depends on how thick it is but roughly that's kind of what i go for so i'm going to go for six inches at one end and six inches at the bottom and i want the bow to be about here so really i'm going to stick that about there i think and then that should hopefully give me enough enough space so i'm going to take uh use red tape for this so i'm just going to work out where halfway is and i'm just going to connect a little um rib, a little thing on here so i know where my my edge is that i measured so let's work out halfway so i found halfway at two inches because it's, it's four it's four inches wide and then I've just done um, a quarter of an inch either side and I'm just going to basically pencil in a kind of a gully so I know roughly where I'm going with this. Um, I'm leaving a gap. I'm not going to go all the way up because obviously we've got pattern paper and mats and I don't want to, um, oh, I don't do either at the front one, it's just, the, it's just the first three. I don't want to worry about um, it showing so that's why I'm just putting it kind of inside. So just these three here and then it will pop out and it will go above there. So that's where I need to put my tape. So let's go ahead and put my tape on. That's the same width as my um, ribbon. And so this will need to go from there at the top all the way down. Down here like this. All the way to there. And then we can stop it about there. I haven't tried this method yet, so I'm not sure if it's going to work, but hopefully it will. So then we're going to take off the backing. And then we're going to put this on. Now you have to obviously bear in mind as well that your box is going to fold in soon. So it's not going to be a straight line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it like that. And then I'm just going to bend this round so it's roughly round a corner. Because then at least we know it sort of is going to go around a corner like that and then again round here like that there we go and then that's going to be loose right so now we've done that now we can go ahead and stick down our panels so i'm going to go ahead now and stick the panels down if you have a right way up pattern again i would advise you don't use a right way up pattern for starters if you have a right way up pattern then this one here needs to be the flaps can be at the top that's that way up that's that way up and if you turn it over, the same on here. So that's the right way up, that's the right way up. Okay, so just so you know. So I'm going to go ahead now and stick these panels down. Okay, so you should end up with that. So obviously this is sticking out here. You haven't got anything on that panel there because that's going to go over the front. So eventually what will happen is this will fold around like this. And then you can do your little bow up at the top there. So that's the uh, that's the idea of it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to do the front flap. So for the front flap, you just need a piece that is three quarters of an inch wide um, by three 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 and three quarters of an inch long. Now I've decided on this one to go for a pattern. On the original, I used the mat and I actually um, just embossed it because I wanted a bit of pattern. I didn't want to have to do mat and layer it because if you mat and layer it you're just going to end up with a very 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 thin piece uh, which will be a pattern so yeah so i went for um just a matte piece and just embossed it so on this one i've gone for the pattern and this is the pattern i'm going to be using on the side so it all ties in so i'm just going to go ahead and stick this onto the flap and again i've also um rounded the edges on it just because obviously i've done that on the actual flap so let's just stick this down Okay, so I've done that. So now we're going to turn it over and we're going to do the inside. Now, again, you don't have to, but on my original one, I did put something patterned on the inside just so that then if there's a gap in the suites or whatever, you're not seeing all the tabs, you're seeing something interesting. 
So I'm not going to bother with um, a matte layer and a pattern layer for the inside. I'm only going to do a pattern layer. Um, and the reason being, I just think it's a bit of overkill if you're matte and layering the inside and you've only got a little aperture that you're seeing through, you're probably not going to see the border. So I don't think it's really that important to have a matte and layer. If you want to, you can. If you're going to do that, you just literally use exactly the same measurements as, if you, as you've used for the front. Um, but I'm not doing that. So I've got two pieces of pattern paper that are three and three quarter by three and three quarter and two pieces that are two and a quarter by three and three quarter. So I'm going to go ahead now and stick these in um, like this. And again, if you're using any way up pattern, it's a lot easier. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to, but it's just a lot easier if you do. So I'm going to go ahead now and stick these down. So you should end up with that. So your box is pretty much decorated up now. So we just need to sort out the sides. So I'm going to put this to one side for now and bring in our side pieces. So we've got the obviously the base pieces, and these were two and a half by four. You will also need two matte pieces that are two and a quarter by three and three quarters and two pattern pieces that are two inches by three and a half. Now, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to um, cut these all diagonally in half. What I would suggest is that on your mats and your patterns, you if you're using glue, then it doesn't matter. But if you're using tape, what I would do is I would tape on the back of your um, pieces before you cut them. Just makes it a lot easier. I'm actually using um, glue this time around, so it's not a problem. I can just go ahead and cut. Um, but what you want to do is you're going to take your matte pieces um, and with your matte pieces, if you've got, not your matte pieces, your base pieces, with your base pieces, if you have base pieces that are the same colour on both sides, it doesn't really matter, you know, which way you cut them. But just so that you can see, if you don't, if you've got a single sided card, so it's coloured on this side and it's white on the other side or a different colour on the other side and you want this to be the front, then what you need to do is you need to cut from the top left to the bottom right and then on the other piece you want to cut from the bottom left to the top right. So I'm going to cut these pieces now so you can see what I mean. Okay, so as you can see I've cut that one that way and that one's the other way. If, like me, you have card that is the same colour on both sides, then you can, if you want to, cut them both the same way and just literally turn them around, like I just did just then, like that. So you can just do that. But if you've got single-sided card, you need to make sure you cut them right properly. Now, the same goes for your mat. So when I did my original um, box, I was using Miri, which obviously is mirrored on one side and it's white on the other. So I had to make sure... That I cut them alternate ways. Today I'm using um, double sided black card so it doesn't matter I can do whatever I want and I can just turn it around it's fine but when you come to the pattern I will need to um, make sure I cut it like I've done here so this way and then that way because on the other side it's it's a different different pattern. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut my mat and my pattern exactly the same way as I've cut my base card. So you can more or less see what I've done there. So now I'm going to go ahead, put my stick my mat, uh, my pattern onto my mat, and my mat onto the base. Okay, you will find that there's a bit of a border. You might end up with a little bit of discrepancy. Maybe you've got, you know, like here, I've got a wider border here than I have here, but that's just part of doing triangles, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go ahead now and, and stick all of these down. Okay, so there's your pieces stuck down. Now, one thing I didn't mention, uh, which I probably should have done, I would use, well, I did sort of mention it. You need to use any way up paper, really. If you've got a right way up to your pattern, um, then do not stick your pattern down like this. 
because what's going to happen is in a minute if I take those two bits out that is what's going to be the so that's how it's going to be on the box and this one is the same so if we flip this around like that and then like that so that's the way it's going to be up so if you've got a right way up pattern then that then I would stick it down like that okay make sure but obviously if you've got a right way up pattern it's just going to be a bit of a pain with the cutting the diagonals and whatever so I would just go make life easy for yourself and use a non-directional pattern okay so we've done that so if we bring our base back in um, we can now go ahead and stick down the sides now you could do the inside bit first if you wanted to but I think it might be easier to do the sides first and then move on to that so what we're going to do is bring this in now I'm just going to take the backing off of uh, this side here and I'm going to take one of my triangles and so this right angle edge you've got two right angle edges I'm going to call them that and you hopefully you know what I mean this is like your diagonal edge and these are your right angle edges the longest right angle edge is going to go up against that tab there like that and then we're just going to peel the rest of this off and that's going to stick down there and we're going to do the same on the other side so this is going to go on here I don't know why I've just peeled that off oh because it was attached it came off so just watch that if you've got um if you've got uh where where, where you got the corner there I'm noticing it's going to be the same there just make sure you don't peel off all the tape because you want to keep that the, the backing on that piece so on this side we're going to do the same so we're just going to peel this backing off and then again take our triangle and attach it on up that edge like that and then if you turn it round and do the same at this end so we're going to again attach this on Oh, sorry, there's my right angled edge. There's my right angled edge, and there's my right angled edge. Yes, yeah, so you, you, do you see what I just did there? I went like this and thought, hang on a second, that's too big because that's my diagonal edge. So you need to make sure you're doing it on the right angle edge, the straight one. Remember at the beginning when I said about notching out your tabs? The reason why you went for an acute angle is because of this. So if I flip this over, can you see there? Hopefully, you can see. I just if I just done like a normal notch like that it would now be sticking out of this edge so that's why you need to make sure that you do quite a sharp angle on that notch okay so what we're going to do now is if we just turn it on its side and just fold these flaps in I'm going to take the backing off this one here at the base and then I'm going to bring this round and this is going to stick on here and this will be your right angle if you end up like i have there with a bit of tape exposed you can just use an anti-static static pad or a bit of talcum powder on that just to take the stick off it okay so that's that side and i'm going to do the same on this side on the other the other side of that 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 what that edge i'm doing i'm just going to bring this down make sure that sticks nice and that so that's one side of your box done okay and then we're going to do the same on this one you end up with that which is quite cute so that's basically what we had on the original box so if you wanted to you could just leave it like that um you could put some pattern in the corners if you wanted to just to cover the tabs up um but i just thought because because it's such a small box, I would end up using this for something like sweets. And so with that being, you know, being the case, I don't want all the sweets escaping when they open them up. And also it's difficult to, if you're trying to close it, it's going to fall out everywhere. So that's why we did the five by five pieces. So let's go move on to these five by five pieces. So you want to take your five by fives. Now you can't see my score lines, which is a bit of a problem, but I've got score lines down the sides and at the bottom down the sides at the bottom so the top bit doesn't have any score lines on so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it um I'm going to fold them for, for now so you can kind of see them and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut an aperture out of the middle of our um of our of our, set, our panel 
and again if you don't want to cut an aperture you don't have to but i just thought it's quite nice to be able to just kind of look through and see what's in the box so i'm just going to fold these um, and then we're going to cut the aperture now as i said if you don't want to you don't have to fold these now the reason i'm doing this is because I, then i can see where i can place my so if i fold that in like that i can kind of see how big my panel is so when i'm placing my die i can make sure it's central and the same with this one so i'm just going to find a die now for my aperture and i'll be back with you in a second okay so here's the circle die i'm going to use now just a little side note i've just realized that as with my original box that i filmed um i forgot on this one to put the handle in so let me just tell you where you should put the handle in okay uh if you so i'm gonna i'm not gonna put a handle on this this is gonna be a box um because i really don't want to peel things off so basically when we at the beginning when we were putting the base together do you remember we stuck the flap in before you stick the flap in what you want to do is you want to put your um your ribbon so i did cut the handle out your ribbon needs to go on that bit there and then you stick the flap over the top so you know where we, where we stuck where we stuck the flap in where the tab was you want to stick your ribbon handle in first so say for example this isn't here you'd stick that in like that so you put a bit of tape on and you'd stick that down and then you'd stick your flap on the top so your tab on the top so that would hide it and then you put your pattern piece over the top of that so that's what you need to do if you want to handle I did want a handle however because I've now come this far I don't want to pull it apart and put a handle in so I'm not going to bother with the handle this will just end up as a box um so yeah anyway back to what we were doing so um I've chosen a circle so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this on tape it into place and then run it through my die cutting machine um, and I will be back with you when I've done that Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut out my circles. I'm hoping they're roughly in the same place. Um, so there's my circles cut out. So now what we want to do is you want to bring in two pieces of acetate. So these pieces of acetate need to be three and seven eighths by four and a half approximately. Um, and what we're going to do, as I said before, if you want to, you can just slide them in. But I'm actually going to stick mine down on this one. Um, I didn't on the last um, box but I am going to on this one. So you just want to go ahead and you want to stick them down on the underside. Now you might find that this one for some reason is a little bit, is a little bit long. I don't quite know why. Um, oh yeah, okay. So on, on this one, I actually made it so that it was a little bit longer. So I think that's the four and a half, isn't it? Yeah, four and a half. If you're sticking them down, you want to make them a little bit shorter. So if you're sticking your acetate down, you need to make them approximately, um, I would say three and seven eighths by four and a quarter, if you're going to stick them down. If you're not sticking them down, then do them four and a half, um, because then what happens is you have a little bit poking out of the top, and what you can do is just cut a little notch out, so then they can just slide the acetate out of place. Um, but because I am, I am going to stick them down I'm just going to trim a little bit off because they're just a little bit too long so I'm going to go ahead now and stick these into place okay so I've got my two pieces done so now we're going to turn them over and what we want to do is on the tabs, so these bits here, we're going to put our red tape again and then we're going to notch them out and then we're going to stick them in. So let's get the red tape on those pieces. Now I've actually got a little bit of a crease on my acetate, which is annoying, but it's just one of those things. So let's go ahead and tape up our tabs. Okay, so you've got your tabs all taped up so now we're just going to go ahead and notch them out um just so then now again with this this bit here actually needs to be that needs to be way more acute than that that's not enough it needs to be really tight 
um, because what's going to happen is this is going to fit at the bottom like that and this bit is what's going to go in here you'll see it in a minute but um yeah you need to make sure that's quite a tight so i'm just going to make that a bit more severe like that and again what i would do before you actually start peeling backing off you really need to kind of test it and just see um, if you've done enough um, at the bottom here again we're just going to go that's just a normal we're going to cut straight across like that and straight across like that so there's your um there's one done so i'm going to do the other one now okay so you've got your two um pieces so now you bring your box back in again and if we start with the bottom if you just peel the backing off your um, bottom tab and then what we're going to do is bring your box in just bring this up and that needs to go right in that middle bit in line with the center fold and you want to make sure that these um so you want to make sure that these these sides are going to fit in okay and they're not going to butt up against anything so if i just push this in here it's got stuck on the tab yeah so they're both going to fit in fine so as you can see now you probably have noticed that when you're like this you can actually see that tab if it really bothers you then obviously stick this down first and then decorate the inside for me it doesn't bother me because when this is closed like that this aperture you can't you can't see that far down so it, it doesn't bother me but obviously i know for some people that would be really annoying uh, it, i mean it bothers me that i can see it but because when i close it i can't see it, it then that's fine so then what we're going to do is we're going to take off the side pieces and then stick them in line with that diagonal piece now this is a little bit tricky and this was made easier on the other box because i hadn't stuck the acetate in but um, you just have to kind of work it as best you can. Um, this side is going to be more tricky. So stick that in and then you just literally you're going to have to get your finger in or get a ruler in or something to stick that side down. Um, when, when you haven't got acetate in that aperture, it's a lot easier because you can stick your fingers through the aperture and stick this side piece down. Um, but because obviously we've gone ahead and put acetate in, it does make it a bit more tricky but i'm just going to use my bone folder thing and just you can't see but i'm just like pressing it against the um desk and so then that fits in so that's one side done something i don't like about acetate is you get all the little bits hanging around anyway that's one side done so we're going to go ahead and do the other side so exactly the same again take your <laughs> Take your in your middle piece and we're going to turn it around um, and do the same again so stick the bottom in first like that and then stick your sides in now as i was saying with the whole acetate to acetate or not to acetate situation if you are not sticking your acetate in then it just means you can fill up you know easier because you could just literally pour your sweets through the hole and then put the acetate on and um, if you like me you've stuck it down then you've got a bit of a gap here so you just got to make sure whatever sweets you're going to put in there or whatever you're going to put in there will fit through that gap otherwise you really do need to just slide your acetate into place um, i mean if you wanted to you could leave this bit open fill it up and then just stick that down that side down that would also be fine um, but obviously i'm just going to show you the full thing and then I will just make sure that my sweets fit in that gap. Um, so that's like that. Okay, so that's your finished box. Okay, so there's your finished box. Obviously, then this will come over like that. This folds up and then you tie your little thing on the top. And obviously, if you've got a handle then you've got that as well um but i haven't got the handle because i forgot to put it on <laughs> i thought it was doing so well and so there's your little bow on the top and there's your little box okay so i hope you liked it i have to, i think i prefer the first one i made i think it does need the handle 
um because it makes it more big like a gift bag a diamond gift bag but anyway never mind um so yes yeah, so if you liked it please like subscribe leave a comment down below hit the notification bell so you never miss a video and i will see you next time bye